Hello, I'm Chris Bradford, and here is a demo of Datastax Mission Control. I want to note that we are running one of the release candidates right now, um, and most of the functionality is here and present, but I uh, just want to give you a high-level walkthrough of what you can do here with Mission Control. So first things first, we're at the login screen in our web browser. Mission Control is already installed, um, and we are running on top of a GKE cluster in the U.S. Central One region, and I think we have either 9 or 12 um, pieces of hardware that we're going to be connecting to and, and talking with. So the first things first, we're going to um, log in here. Um, and after we've authenticated, oh, and everything asks us if we want to save, uh, we're going to go ahead and accept. It's worth noting most installations you'll be authenticating with uh, LDAP or OIDC. Um, that username and password is just as a, like a, a fallback should things go horribly awry and maybe your external authentication system isn't functioning. Uh, so here at the home screen, let's talk a little bit about what's present here. You can see we have our, our account information we can log out. Um, additionally, we have uh, the project that we're connected to right now. Projects are analogous to Kubernetes namespaces, but ultimately they're just ways to group clusters together. You could have a project that's production, or you could have a project that's a specific line of business, or particular application team, what have you. Um, and you can create new projects here. Note that whatever your your name is, um, there will be some suffix added to it. And that's just to make sure that a project name doesn't collide with any of the reserved um, namespaces within the system. Um, but ultimately, we're going to use the demo project here. And we can see I've already started to provision a cluster. We're going to let that run while we walk through some of the other uh, pieces here. We have a cluster view, so if you have more than three clusters here, uh, you'll have a list and you can search for them. Further, if we want to create a new cluster, um, we click Create Cluster in the top corner, give our cluster a name. I'm a big fan of Foo. Choose the type of cluster we want to deploy, so Datastax Enterprise or Apache Cassandra. Uh, we support DSE 6.8 and Apache Cassandra 3.11. So once you choose your type and specify a version number, you then describe your topology. We're going to run a single DC here. Um, we're not going to enable any advanced workloads. We can override specific configuration settings, choose uh, where we want this data center to be deployed, if that's locally within our control plane or to a remote data plane. Uh, and then finally, describe our racks. We're going to go with a single rack with one node. We describe the number of CPU cores we want to have available. So 1,000 milli CPUs is one virtual CPU. And that's fine for this demo. And we'll run with uh, four gigs of RAM. We choose the type of storage we want, and this is just the PD SSD inside of GCP, and the amount of data we want to use. So this can be up to, we can put a terabyte in here. I'm just going to say five gigabytes, because again, this is just for illustrative purposes. Finally, we indicate that we want to enable authentication on our cluster. We can provide credentials here. Um, the username is defaulted, but we can provide a password. If we don't provide a password, one will be generated for us. And then finally, we have a button to enable internode encryption. Um, this automates the process of issuing certificates and all that. If we were to be um, connecting to an existing cluster that already exists, we could put IP addresses for existing nodes here, and we would discover those. Um, so that's all. Let's go ahead and create this, move my head out of the way. There we go. Oh, my data center size is invalid. Let's see. I'm sure it's one node. Yep, looks good. Let's try that again. There we go. And that's going to go ahead and provision. And we can note that that cluster that was already provisioning is now up. And we have these indicators of the amount of data that's available, disk throughput, that kind of thing. So let's click in and look at what a functioning cluster looks like. So this one is actually still bootstrapping. You'll note that nodes one and two are done. The third node is coming up. We have information about each of the data centers. So if we we're running with multiple data centers, they would appear here. We'll take a look at that here in a minute. And for each individual node in the system, we can go and um, trigger actions on our nodes, including restart, upgrading SS tables, most node tool commands. We can also trigger bulk actions across an entire data center, or the entire cluster, individual racks. Um, and then that's the core of this page. Next up is observability. 
So these are where all the metrics flow in. You can set a frequency for how often you want these metrics to update, as well as the time period that we want to query from. In addition to metrics, we have centralized logs. So here we can go to logs and look at the logs for a particular node. If you want to search for a particular string, that's available as well. Um, and you can provide a time period for what you're looking for. Okay, next is the backup and restore service. Um, and while this cluster doesn't have backups enabled, uh, you can see that there's functionality to create backups, schedule backups, um, as well as uh, the repair interface for repairing individual tables. Um, this is all automated, nothing that you really need to, if you want to trigger a repair, you can do that or set up a schedule, um, but it's designed to be as turnkey as possible. We go back to this overview, we can see that third node is up and running now, and we are in a good spot. Now, it's worth noting that anything I can do in the UI here, I can also do via an API. And so over here I have um, the YAML file that actually describes that cluster definition that we were looking at just on the, uh, the other screen. And so here I have, um, I'm saying I wanna run DSE version 6.8.38. These are my storage requirements options like the heap, the number of CPU cores, and memory available. Um, next, we describe our data center, the number of nodes within that data center, and any rack definitions. Here, I'm pinning this logical rack named US Central 1A to nodes that are running in the US Central 1A region. So every node in a piece of physical hardware has labels applied to it, and so these can be key value pairs. So here we have a label that's related, related to the availability zone of the node, um, but we could also have ad hoc labels such as line of business or um, environment, account information, what have you, to pin specific workloads to particular pieces of hardware. I mentioned previously in the, uh, the introduction deck how mission control can handle scaling up and scaling down. Um, let's say we wanted to change this cluster and add a, another data center. Um, we would simply add a new definition. Here we're calling it DC2 with a size of 3. We go over to our command line and we say cube, kubectl apply our manifest. And so that has actually been pushed out. And here in a number of seconds, we'll see the next data center uh, appear here as well as any new nodes come online. Uh, while that's running, we can go back and note that the cluster we created via the UI is up and running, and we can modify the shape of this cluster. If we wanted to upgrade this cluster to another version, like say 6837, all we have to do is change that version number, and the operators will go out and replace the nodes one at a time, um, bring them up to the newest version. After all the nodes are up and running on the latest version, we can then go and trigger an upgrade as a stable action. Again, that happens in a rolling fashion. Uh, next, we want to take a look at the alert system. So the interesting thing about alerts inside of Mission Control is uh, they are defined using uh, PromQL or the Prometheus query language, which is um, very expressive in nature. Here you can see our sample expression here. Um, this field is uh, has code completion enabled. So if you wanted to use functions that are present within Prometheus, um, as well as, or in addition to uh, looking for particular um, metrics that are present in the system, we have completion for metrics. So if I type in Apache, we can see all of the metrics that have Apache in their name and the type of metric that it is. So as you're building out your rules, um, it gives you support. Further, you can describe the alert and um, provide any context description, what have you. Uh, but when it comes to receiving alerts, we can route alerts to uh, Slack and uh, email out of the gate. We're looking to ad add additional um, destinations in the future, but at its core, once you provide a webhook URL for Slack, we can configure recipients. That could be uh, individual, it could be a particular Slack channel, and we can even have policies that say, hey, does this notification match a certain severity? Is it for a particular cluster or data center? Um, and how often should it um, be sent out? So that is the core of mission control. We should see, yep, this is the one where we're adding a new data center. 
Um, it's starting to provision that right now. And it's a couple of minutes per node. It doesn't take too long um, to, to have those resources come online. I did mention that projects have um, some extra information after them if you're using the API. And you can see that here in the namespace where it has a suffix applied to it. Um, if we wanted to create an additional cluster, we would just create a new YAML file, submit it with kubectl. One of the interesting things about this is this also supports like GitOps workflows. So if I wanted to say prepare to scale up because we're going into a holiday season, I could change the YAML file, check it into a Git repo and open a pull request, have a number, another member of my operations team approve that pull request and then have that merged YAML file pushed out to the cluster automatically. I don't have the demo of that here, but that's something that uh, we'll be looking to provide here in the future. So um, with that said, you can check out Mission Control today. Thank you. Bye. For more information on Datastax Mission Control, just head on out to datastax.com slash products slash mission control. There you can find all the information you need, including downloads and documentation. Thank you and have a great day.